Hi everyone, Dexy from A2K. Thanks for joining us for today's webinar, Design and Make Anything, version 360. We will have Applications Engineer John Pitcher presenting for us. So we just go through about A2K ourselves. We're all about fostering innovation through consulting and training. A2K Technologies plays a vital role in helping the infrastructure, building, mining, construction, architecture, and manufacturing industries reach their full potential by delivering complete technology solutions and support services such as education, consulting, and IT managed services. We're working with visionaries to shape the future of design and in turn enable them through innovation to minimize risks, improve productivity, and achieve excellence. A2K Technologies is considered the business partner of choice and trusted advisor by vendors and clients. We partner with major software and hardware vendors to meet our clients' technology needs. We strive to exceed client expectations by understanding the challenges and delivering solutions through experience and innovation. We work with clients and companies of any size nationally and abroad. Over to you, John. Thanks, Dexter, and uh, yeah, welcome along, everybody. Uh, my name is John Pitcher. I'm a technical support engineer with A2K Technologies, and uh, be happy to present for you today some of the functionality of the Fusion technology. First up, just a couple of things about me. Um, I'm presently working with A2K, as I said, as an applications engineer, mainly focused in the mechanical space. My background is in manufacturing. Um, I've worked in various aspects uh, of manufacturing, including hydraulics and pneumatics. Uh, I've spent 10 years of my life programming CNC equipment, um, just to name a few of the aspects of my, my work history. For the past 13 years though, I've been connected to the Autodesk line of products. So working with uh, AutoCAD, uh, Inventor, and uh, more recently in the last four or five years with uh, Fusion 360, which we're here to talk about today. And just in the last 18 months or so, I've been working in the additive manufacturing space or 3D printing, as uh, some people would, uh, would know that. So look, uh, we've certainly got an exciting presentation ahead and uh, look forward to working through this with you today. So you've heard us talk about uh, this before, the future of making things. Why do we talk about it so much? Well, it's because the products that are currently being introduced into the market are forcing us to rethink how we imagine them, how we design them, and of course, how we manufacture those products as well. When I say the future, it's not so much about the future, is it? It's really about what's happening today, where our world, our world moves at a very fast pace. There's a few current trends uh, that have a major impact on our concepts and uh, how we design things and how we approach ideas. And there's a lot of challenges, obviously, and tackling some of those problems when we're working with a, a complex environment. Um, it has a big influence on the way that we get an idea through to the product design phase and then out the door to the customer or to the marketplace. And I'm certain you'd all be aware of the current challenges with COVID. Um, it's something that's um, creating massive global upheaval in the economic side of things. So really, it comes down to manufacturers to produce more with less, I guess, is the bottom line with that. Uh, we need to be able to create things and get them to market much quicker than we, we normally would. So I guess, really, we need to rethink uh, how we make things. At the end of the day, there's, uh, there's a lot of challenges uh, and uh, we're certainly faced with some fairly dramatic uh, changes. So with regard to moving forward with this and how we face some of those challenges, um, there's certainly, like I said, the way we design things needs to change because some of those methods that we've used 20 and 30 years ago are obviously obsolete. We need to move forward with that. And manufacturing has moved at a rate of uh, high pace in the last uh, 10 to 15 years, and certainly more so in the last 10 years. So I guess um, we often hear from our customers that they're looking for ways to innovate. Um, but it's a struggle, isn't it? It's a struggle to find time to innovate. And so your customers and all the consumers out there in the world are looking for better performance of course, that requires a complete understanding of how your designs operate well before they're built. So are we getting the most out of our machines? We need higher productivity. What are you doing to ensure that there's no bottlenecks in your processes? 
What are some of the ways that you can win more business or gain reoccurring businesses business from your customers? So how can Autodesk help you answer some of those questions? Well, many of you would have heard of the product design manufacturing collection. And of course, that is a, a large collection of products. It's a, a suite of products that um, Autodesk have released to enable us to help with those pursuits and to, uh, to make things more streamlined moving forward. And so I want today to take a, a deep dive into one aspect of the product design manufacturing collection, and that is Fusion 360. Fusion 360 is a very exciting product. It's a, um, it's a product that certainly gives us many tools to work with. And uh, on this slide, I've just got some of the key points um, of Autodesk Fusion 360. Basically, it's a CAD system, but it's not just your average CAD system. It's a cloud-enabled CAD system. You may have heard of some of the other tools that Autodesk have released in this line of things. You might have heard of AutoCAD 360. You might have heard of BIM 360 or even Drive 360. Many of those apps that Autodesk have created are totally cloud dependent. But what I want to point out with Fusion is that Fusion does actually have a non-cloud mode. A lot of people think that Fusion is purely a cloud CAD system. It's cloud enabled, yes, but it's not cloud dependent. We can work in offline mode, as we call it, and we certainly can save our files to our local drive if we would like to go that path as well. And certainly I'll be going through some of that in our live demo shortly. But the cloud collaboration tools um, mean that everyone in our team, if we wish to work in the cloud, uh, can collaborate very conveniently um, on their chosen device and um, obviously uh, being able to connect continuously with your colleagues is a, a very beneficial thing. Another great feature of Fusion is that it's one of the only CAD systems to function natively on Macintosh. So we can use a Mac operating system just as we can use a Windows operating system. That's a really powerful thing because uh, not too many CAD systems of the, uh, the level that Fusion is have that capacity. And look, it's not just a CAD system. So I guess the big thing with Fusion, it's got many, many other functions with it in that we can use it for rendering. We can use it for simulation. So we can do some generative design and I'm gonna go through that in a little bit more detail as we work through our presentation today. Fusion also has a CAM workspace. So if you're in the CNC game and you've got um, a, a three, four or five axis CNC machine, we can quite happily generate G code for your CNC machine within the Fusion interface. Again, all in the one place, we can work with all of those different options. Fusion also has the, also has the ability to create sheet metal components. And of course, we can do many, many other things in Fusion. It's a very, very powerful tool. We can animate exploded assembly. So if you want to show an assembly in its uh, component form, we can explode that apart. And I'll run one of those for you later in our live demonstration as well. Fusion also has some very powerful surfacing tools. So we can work with T-splines and nerve surfaces for those people who are involved in that. So what I want to do today is uh, swing over to Fusion and uh, spend the next 40 minutes or so just stepping you through some of the main areas of Fusion um, and I guess hopefully to inspire you to look further at Fusion um, as a tool that might be able to help you um, speed up your design process and, uh, and make things and move things to market quicker. So what I thought we'd do today is um, just design up a quick clevis. Uh, this looks a fairly easy part to model. Um, we're going to actually create a slightly scaled version of this and then step it through the different aspects of, of Fusion itself. What I thought I'd do first though is, um, is give you a bit of a rundown on the interface um, and how Fusion behaves. Basically, that, uh, that clevis part that I just showed you weighs about one and a half kilos. The, um, the preferences area is up here under the top, in the top right of your screen under your name. Um, and this is where we can set, as I mentioned, the default units for the design, manufacture or simulation area. 
Um, and also the other one that I mentioned in here was the orientation of your modeling. So default modeling orientation. Are you able to still see that all right now, Dexter, just to confirm? Yep, it's all working now, thanks, John. Good, uh, cheers. Sorry about that, everybody. Um, yeah, so like I mentioned, the, um, the other key aspect of um, um, Fusion is uh, up in the top left, we've got um, this little box. And basically what this is, is our, what we call our data panel. So if you click on this box, you'll notice it flies out to show you the storage area for Fusion. Now, by default, this does store to the cloud. Uh, so this goes up and, and uh, saves your files to the cloud. But there is certainly, like I said before, some very important information about people that are uh, are wary of sharing their IP or their inter uh, intellectual property. So I want to just point out one other thing with the interface. Up here on the little clock, up in the very top right as well, you'll notice we've got the option here to work offline. That's quite a, an important element for some people. Obviously, uh, we don't want to, our IP falling into the wrong hands. So to be able to work offline is uh, a very valuable thing for, for some users. Um, uh, so yeah, we can have Fusion save files also to our local hard drive. So when we've got a file open, we can go in here and go save as, and you could simply save your files to your C drive or your server or wherever you'd like to keep your files. Uh, that way they're uh, perhaps safer and more secure in, uh, in some people's opinion anyway. Uh, so I guess, yeah, it comes down to uh, what you're working with there. Okay, so I want to dive straight in now. Like I said, uh, the user interface um, is, is quite a, uh, a, a, an easy to learn user interface. If you've used any of the other CAD tools like Inventor or uh, some of the other tools out in the marketplace, uh, you'll find Fusion quite easy to learn. Um, aside from, yeah, just a couple of little differences and uh, I'll certainly highlight a couple of those as we go through. So effectively, this area over the, the left side is my storage area for my files. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is just simply open this little hydraulic cylinder. So all we do is just double click on that and uh, that will open up the, uh, the hydraulic cylinder model in my Fusion window. So here's, um, here's my uh, hydraulic cylinder that I've got. The, uh, the rod moves in and out, as you can see. We could simulate that. We can do a range of different things with that. Um, obviously, to zoom in, zoom out, we scroll our mouse wheel. If you wish to pan your model, you can either click on the, the view cube up in the top left and uh, rotate your model around like this. Um, but equally, if you'd like to use your left hand on the keyboard, if you hold down the shift key, press your middle mouse wheel, you get the same control. So I tend to use that function only to save me some time going up to the top right of the screen. But effectively, we can. Um, pan our model around uh, by holding the middle mouse wheel and moving left to right. But like I said, if you wish to rotate your model, simply hold the shift key, press your middle mouse wheel, and you've got the option to rotate that model around. So if you've got a model that you can open up from your data panel, feel free to do the same. And uh, as I said, with our training, um, in actual fact that we're running a course next week, so we obviously go through a lot of these functions in much greater detail, but due to our time constraint today, we, we need to really keep moving. So this little uh, hydraulic cylinder is, uh, is sitting here, and um, one of the really important things that I want to point out is this browser on the left-hand left -hand side of your screen. Basically, your browser, as anybody that's used a 3D CAD system would know, is we've got here all of the components that are included in this particular assembly. So you'll see here we've got the cylinder body. So that's set to translucent. So you can see the, um, uh, the piston inside that. Um, down here, we've got the cylinder head. Um, we've got a range of different uh, components. Here's the piston rod that I mentioned earlier. So it's this one here that we can uh, push and pull to make our cylinder work correctly. And we could equally drive that in and out as well using some of the other tools in the various aspects of um, of our Fusion interface. So yeah, you can see the bolts and the nuts and bits and pieces there. We've got some threaded rod, um, which is holding our cylinder together. Uh, you can see all those items in here. Um, 
Again, if we want to turn the visibility of those off, just to show you how easy the Fusion interface is, if I, for instance, want to turn the piston off, I just click on the little eyeball here. So you can see a little eye on the left-hand side. If you click on that, it will simply turn the visibility of that item on and off. So as you can see here, I turn off the piston rod. So yeah, the Fusion interface is very, very flexible and very handy to us. Okay, so look, um, we're going to come back to this assembly a bit later on. And we're actually going to put our little clevis uh, on the end of this piston rod and uh, fit that together just as a quick example of, of um, uh, manufacturing a 3D part. But like I said, if you've got Fusion open in front of you, and fantastic if you have, um, what we're going to do, like I said, is model up a new design of the Fusion of that component, the little clevis that I mentioned earlier. So effectively with Fusion, we can start a new design here. Um, you'll see we've got a range of different options. And again, we don't have time to go through all these today, but one that is quite important is this export option, where again, like I said, we can actually save this to our local drive if we would like, okay? Um, and you can see here, we've got a range of different formats that we can save files out. So you can see in here, we've got an option to save out as the default format for Fusion. So this would be an archived file, .f3z. Down here, we can actually save it out as an Inventor file. So we can interact with Inventor in, uh, if you're using Inventor as well. DWG, if you want to work in AutoCAD. DXFs, obviously very handy if you're running a laser cut system. Um, and a range of other file types. So I just um, sat, step, all of the different functionalities that we've got here to save out uh, for use with other CAD systems. And one really important one, um, if you're in the additive manufacturing business or 3D printing business, we can save this file out as an STL, which is the common format for 3D printing type environments. In actual fact, Fusion also has a, uh, another great tool where we can actually, I'm just gonna cancel out of this. You can also see down here, we've got a 3D print option and if i select this what fusion does it then goes into a mode that allows me to take this out and if i wanted to 3d print just the head of this uh, hydraulic cylinder um, if i select that head hit enter it brings up a window that will allow me to actually take that off into my favorite 3d printing slicing software so in actual fact on my second screen um, my fusion has fired up product called Cura, and, uh, which is a product I use for 3D printing with our old makers. But um, yeah, just another, another great little tool that, uh, that Fusion has that uh, makes our workflow just that bit smoother if we want to, to go with that. So I'll just quickly bring that over onto my second screen. Oh, it's gonna go crazy for the resolution. Sorry guys, I'll just pull this back in. So here's that, uh, that particular head. Sorry, I'll probably, this is kind of mess things up again. Oh, but anyway, I'll, uh, I'll come back to this. So there's my, um, my head component sitting there in Cura, ready to be 3D printed on my ultimate machine. Uh, we won't spend any time on that. That's another uh, aspect altogether uh, that we could spend another webinar, perhaps another time on. Okay, so let's dive right in. And uh, as I said, if you've got Fusion handy, let's uh, feel free to open it up and, and follow along. I'll, I'll just plod through the steps to uh, create that little clevis part that I showed you before that, uh, that would be on the likes of an excavator uh, that I showed you back in our PowerPoint. So what I'm gonna do, and look, feel free to do this as well. Up the top here, I've got an option for a new design. So if I click on that, basically that opens a blank file uh, within Fusion. And look, we will have to move relatively quickly and apologies for that, but uh, let's, let's quickly zip through and uh, create our, our little clever. So I'm gonna start off by creating a box, okay? And uh, Fusion has these great tools for creating fairly traditional shapes uh, where we can just jump straight in and start the process of creating a box, a sphere, a torus, a cylinder, whatever it might be. So I'm gonna select the box option now. What Fusion says to me next, it says, well, which plane do you want to start uh, the clevis component on? So I'm just going to select this plane here. So I'm gonna select the, uh, what we would commonly refer to as the XY plane. 
And basically, we need to just follow the prompts now. So Fusion's saying, well, whereabouts do you want to start your box? So I'm gonna start at the datum or origin point here in the center. And if we move our mouse pointer away, you'll notice that um, we're offered then the option to insert some values. Now, like I said, we're gonna make this as a slightly scaled down version of our clevis, but uh, nonetheless, the principle is the same. So I'm just gonna make it 50 millimeters wide, and then I can uh, hit my tab key, and we'll make it uh, 80 millimeters long. Okay. So that forms the basis, if you like, of the base of our clevis component. Uh, from here, I just hit enter, and then Fusion presents me with another question. Well, how thick do you want the, the base plate or the, the box to be? So I'm just going to make it uh, 12 millimeters thick. Okay, actually, no, we'll make that 10 millimeters. 10 millimeters might be a little bit more uh, appropriate. And simply enter. So we've got our first shape there, or the base of our clevis component. What we're going to do next is uh, it's got four hold down screws in the uh, in each of the corners and there's a couple of different ways we could do this we could either go up and create a hole but the way that i tend to like to do this is to create a point and put the hole on a point it just gives me a little bit more flexibility later on if uh, if things are going to change so i picked this option up in the top left of your ribbon to create a sketch and basically we're going to then select in the little drop down and I'm gonna place four points uh, on my plate. And again, we tend to do this a little bit with the newer CAD tools, rather than worrying about where they live, like you would do in the likes of AutoCAD, we simply place the points and then we just place a dimension on them afterwards. So Fusion is parametric. So as we create each of these dimensions, Fusion remembers that, um, where, where the location of that particular hole is. So I'm just gonna dimension this hole using my dimension tool up here. Or again, if you uh, like hotkeys on your keyboard, you'll notice there I can just hit D on my keyboard to activate the dimension option. So we're gonna make these 10, 10 millimeters in. Now, I don't have to dimension everything here because we can use what we call constraints. Um, and you'll notice we've got a bit of a panel of constraints up here. I'm going to do a horizontal vertical constraint to align this one and this one and this one and this one. Okay, that saves me a, a couple of dimensions. Um, what I'm going to do now is just put another couple of dimensions. So this one here, we're going to dimension. So we're going to place a dimension here of 40 mil. So again, it'll be 10 millimeters in from the other side. Um, and also we'll place another dimension from this end here to this particular hole here, and this one will be 70. Okay, now again, I'm gonna use my constraint option. And again, we've got a whole range of constraints. We're gonna use some, of other, some others of these in a moment, but um, I'll certainly step you through that as we go. So we're gonna do a vertical horizontal to there, and also let's horizontally align these. So I'm now confident that my holes are all 10 millimeters in from the edges of my block. Okay, so let's, um, let's move to the next step. And basically what I do here is I stop the sketch or finish the sketch up here. And again, Fusion has a whole range of ways of doing that. We can right click um, and go okay. Or like I said, uh, that will take us out of that command. And then I can right click and um, uh, yeah, like I said, you can go up here and finish the sketch. All right, so we can pick the green tip. So now I've got my block and I've got four points on that block. And what we're gonna do now is start the whole command. Now, when we, with the, all of these commands, basically Fusion is saying to me, well, okay, you want a hole? Tell me whereabouts you want that hole. So I could just simply pick the face here and Fusion would offer me the option to dimension in from two corners and that's fine. Uh, we can certainly do that, but like I said, I tend to like to go through and place points for holes, only that it gives me a little bit more flexibility later on. So we're picking the holes here. Now in the dialogue here, I've got many, many options. I could make it a counterboard hole. I could make it a counter sunk hole. I just want a plain hole. And in here, we've got options to make it a clearance hole. Um, a, uh, sorry, a, just a typical hole, a simple hole, clearance hole, a threaded hole or a tapered threaded hole. So we can put a BSP thread if we wanted to, not that we want to in this particular instance. 
And lastly, down here, we get the option to tell Fusion whether we want a flat bottom hole on our hole or 180 degree or some other drill point angle. And the little infographic down the bottom here tells us the information about how we want the hole to be created. So I'm just going to make these six millimeter holes. And rather than setting a distance for the depth of the hole, I'm just going to pick the little drop down here and say, let's make it a through all hole. Okay, so effectively then the hole is passing through my entire plane. All right, I'm quite happy with that as a starting point for my base plane. Okay, so uh, there we've got a, a base plane. Now, one other thing I should just point out at this time is Fusion has a couple of different modes. Um, and by modes, uh, what I want to just show you is that we can record the part history when we're creating these components. So the, the astute watchers amongst us might have noticed some things happening down across the bottom here. Basically, across the bottom of your screen, you've got what we call the timeline. And effectively, you can see here how our component was created. So I started off by creating a box. I did a sketch with my four points on it for my holes, and then I created the hole. So by default, we can tell Fusion to remember the part history. The great thing about that is I can just simply right click here and edit the feature and come back in and say, actually, these aren't supposed to be six mil holes. They need to be clearance on a six mil screw. So I want them to be 6.5 and we can pick OK and our part automatically updates. OK, so let's move on. Um, just, just for your information, we can tell Fusion to remember the design history here. So if you right click on the part, name at the top of your browser, right mouse here, you'll notice down here we've got the option to not capture the design history. Like I said, I tend to do this most of the time. Um, certainly very beneficial to do that because it allows us to quickly go back and make edits. All right, so what do we want to do next to our, our Clevis? Um, let's save the file. So I'm going to uh, do a file save, always a good, good policy to do before you get too far down the line. So, um, and look, perhaps do this on, if you're following along as well. So we're going to call this the Clevis. And I'm just putting it into this folder called A2K Make Anything and a folder called Other. So you'll notice now, here's my Clevis component being saved. And this is automatically uploading to the cloud because that's where I told Fusion to do that. Okay, so it's saving that file to the cloud. So the next step, we're going to create the, uh, the central web, if you like, of the, of the Clevis where our hydraulic cylinder would mount. And to do that, we need to create a, a work plane. So I've got an option here to create a plane at the mid plane of a part or between two other faces. So I'm going to pick mid plane and pick the side face here, shift the middle mouse button to rotate my part and pick the side face here. And you can see what Fusion has done. It's very conveniently placed a work plane right through the middle of my part. And I escape, sorry, I need to okay that. I didn't okay the function, so I'm just going to do that again. So we simply pick here. Pick the side face. And then hit enter. Okay, and that saves our plane away. Incidentally, that plane now lives under a folder called construction. Okay, because we created a construction feature, you'll notice in here we've got plane number one now saved. Equally under here, we've got bodies and we've got one body in our model at the moment. So Fusion does support multi-body modeling, um, which for those of you using Inventor, um, you would uh, recall that. So yeah, that's another function that we can use as well for creating any of our, our shapes. Okay, so there's a plane right through the middle. Um, so yeah, just to go through that again. So pick the drop down for construct, pick the mid plane option here, pick one side face of your component and then pick the opposing side face over the other side of your component. So this side face here to create that plane through the middle. Now we're gonna do a sketch on this plane. And uh, so what we do is we start sketch so this one here, create a sketch, and then just simply pick 
on the orange plane, okay? And you'll find that fusion spins you around to look nicely at the screen. We can spin that back if we like. And if I spin that around far enough, you'll see the, the grid now is running fair through the middle of my, uh, my base plane or my clevis bar. Okay, what we're gonna do with the clevis is I'm gonna draw a circle. So you can just jump up here when you're in the circle, uh, sorry, when you're in the sketch mode, you'll have some different tools available to you. So we want to create just a circle. And again, I'm not too worried where it goes, but I'm gonna set the diameter at this point of 20 millimeters. Okay, that forms the, uh, the basis, if you like, for our section that we're going to connect to our um, hydraulic piston in a moment. So let's, uh, let's do some dimensions. So pick up your dimension command, or again, for those of you that like hotkeys, pick, uh, pick the D key on your password, uh, on, on your keyboard. And we're going to dimension this, uh, this circle, and we're going to make it uh, 25 millimeters in from the left hand end. And we're also going to dimension from the bottom face. So I can just pick the bottom edge of my um, rectangle here, and we're going to dimension it up from here by 35 millimetres. Okay, so we've now got a, a circle there. Uh, that's going, we're going to extrude in a moment to create the central section that hooks to our hydraulic piston. Okay, look, I'd like to keep moving. So I'm going to now extrude this and I hope we're not, not going too fast for people, but um, what we're gonna do is extrude this now. And um, in actual fact, sometimes when we uh, do this presentation mode, it misses uh, one of the functions. But anyway, what I'm gonna do is just extrude that by 10 mil. We'll make it five mil. Okay. Okay, so we've got that, uh, that extruded by five mil and um, we're actually going to, uh, notice here now I've got a second body and underneath sketches entry, I've got sketch number three, which is the one I just used. Now I'm gonna turn that back on so I can also extrude the other way. Now, if my dialog would pop up for me, I can obviously do that in an automatic way. But basically I'm going to do this as two operations um, because, um, my little dialogue is not going to pop up for me while I'm doing my Zoom session. So apologies for that, guys. But um, yeah, basically what we're going to do now is, uh, so we've got the, a 10 mil thick extrusion here, but that's no good sitting in space. So in actual fact, we're going to go and edit this sketch and draw some other lines in that sketch to connect this to the base part. So I want a couple of tangent lines that run from my cylinder down to these corners here. So effectively, we're going to quickly uh, zip through this. I'm just gonna pick up my line. Actually, what I'll do first is I'm going to do a project. Um, and those people that have used Inventor before would be familiar with the project geometry function. Basically, this is the same. So I'm just gonna project the top edge of my, um, of my block. And I'm now gonna draw a line from my cylinder up here. And if you click and hold, when you select the cylinder, you'll notice that Fusion allows you to um, keep a tangency. So I've got my left mouse button held down presently, um, and effectively we're gonna draw a line like that. Now, sorry, I'm gonna have to, I just looked at the time, we're gonna have to keep moving here. So I'm gonna do the same around this side. So I'm gonna click and hold, and you can see Fusion holds a tangency to that circle if I hold my left button down at the same time, and I'm just going to simply click down here. Okay, so uh, we've created now the shape that we want to extrude to create the gusset, if you like, or the, um, or the web. So I'm going to finish out of that sketch and I'm going to do the same again. And I'm just going to extrude this by, um, by four millimetres. So we're going to extrude at four millimetres this way. And, uh, quite, uh, and I'll do the same. So I'm going to extrude it again. Again, you wouldn't normally need to do this, but uh, I've actually. I have seen this before where Zoom seems to upset my Fusion interface. So I'm going to do another extrusion of this shape. And this time we're going to go four millimetres this way. So minus four. Okay, this my, uh, this my little 
uh, clevis. And the last thing I want to do is pop a hole through the center here. So I'm just going to use the hole function and basically pick the, uh, the face that I want the hole on. And then I can just simply pick this edge. And Fusion knows then that I want to uh, have a concentric hole to this particular edge. What we're going to do here is simply pick up uh, an eight millimeter hole. And we're going to make it again a through all hole. And I'm going to just accept that. Now, uh, if we had a bit more time, we could go through and tidy this up, put some fillets and chamfers. Let's, put, let's just quickly put a couple of chamfers on this part. So what I'm going to do is select a couple of edges just to make our clevis look pretty and also present some uh, a few less sharp edges to the, the people that are installing the clevis so they don't cut their fingers off and to give us a little bit more strength. So we're actually going to create a, um, a three millimetre chamfer on all of those edges. So you can see there we've chamfered the four edges of our base plate and also we've added um, a fair bit more strength to our part by adding uh, these chamfers in the bottom here. Okay, so there's your first component. Um, what we need to do is obviously save that component. What Fusion does now, it also gives us an option to revision up. So you can see, uh, because I did an initial save, that's called version one which you can see over here in the data panel, version one. So I could call this version two and okay that. And, uh, I can actually still go and open version one of my Clevis if I wanted to. All right, we can actually go in here and pick up the historical versions of our Clevis. Um, so that's Fusion's very clever way of keeping design history. Um, so yeah, you can obviously go back and do that. What I want to do though is jump back into our uh, hydraulic cylinder. We are going to have to up the pace, sorry guys. Um, but what we're going to do is actually go and place the clevis now into our assembly of our hydraulic cylinder and just very quickly assemble it here. I do have some other things I want to talk to you about with, um, with regard to uh, other aspects of fusion. So I'm going to quickly grab and place the clevis just simply by drag and drop. Um, so this is some of the great functionality that we've got in Fusion is the option to just simply drag and drop a component from our data panel into our assembly model. So a very, very powerful little tool to do that. Okay, and we're going to place our clevis there and just very quickly, uh, we don't have time to go into this in huge detail, but what I want to do now is just assemble that and I want to use a joint to assemble the clevis for the piston rod. And basically I'm going to pick this little edge of my clevis and this edge here of my piston rod. And you'll see that fusion then pops that particular part in that orientation. So now I've got my, um, my clevis sitting there quite happily um, attached to my, my piston rod. And again, perhaps I should have put that the other way around, but um, in actual fact, what I'll do, and, and you'll notice along the bottom here, here's all my history. Here's the joint that I just created. So if I double click that, um, we can change the style of the joint. Um, in actual fact, what I'll do is I'll do that again, uh, just for the sake of this exercise. So um, let's jump in here and um, we can pick a range of different styles of joint. Um, so in here, we've got the option to do motion. We can do a range of different things, guys. So um, what I wanted to do was actually to pick in here we can pick yeah a range of different uh, joint options and um, yeah, different a lot of different controls here about how that particular joint works um, and the different elements of that but yeah as you can see we basically pick one edge and then pick the other edge and that will go into position all right so yeah a range of different um, joint controls there uh, that we can set up as well with regard to the way that works. And look, we're only scratching the surface. We don't have time to go into huge detail. So look, we really need to, to speed through. But what I wanted to show you is some of the other modes that we've got in Fusion. Um, so we've been working in design mode. Basically, we have another mode here called generative design. And what this does is a, is a hugely powerful tool. Where in actual fact, we can go through and run some studies on our particular component to um, to maybe have a look at, um, at how we can use 
generative design, which is basically a computation of our model. And uh, we can simply go through and um, pick up different elements or different aspects. So um, when we jump into generative design, effectively what we do is we set up these zones of areas that we wish to um, effectively lock down. So if you can imagine, these are our four holes, our bolt down holes. Um, this is an example um, of the critical data that's been set up and areas that we need to ensure that, uh, that we protect, if you like. So what's critical about our clevis? So normally we would get a block of steel and machine that clevis, uh, and we could use our CAM interface down here under the manufacture heading to do that. Um, I think we're gonna run out of time to, to go through any of those aspects, so apologies for that. But yeah, we certainly could use our CAM functionality to, to go through that particular process. So what I wanna do is, um, we could run this in the background, but I did find that, it, again, you didn't like my Zoom meeting earlier. So I'm just going to show you a couple of things, and I'll go through this when I jump back to the PowerPoint in a moment. Uh, some other elements of the, um, the generative design and how that actually works. It's a very, very powerful tool. What it really allows us to do is to explore different aspects and different shapes, if you like. Uh, in actual fact, here's one of the shapes that we created um, when we ran this study. So effectively, this puts that particular model of my clevis through a, um, a cloud system and runs a, a bunch of studies. And effectively, this component would be exactly the same strength as the other part that I um, that we modelled up. So our little clevis that we uh, that ra looked rather clunky and old. This is a modern version of that clevis. Um, the difference is it's sixty percent lighter. It uses 40% uh, less material, but has the same strength. So if I was 3D printing this part, I could just simply go up here and send it straight off to my 3D printer. Okay, so Fusion optimizes, if you like, when we do a study of a particular item that's, um, that's been created and developed in Fusion, uh, we can run a generative design study over that and I've got some other examples of this in our PowerPoint, which I'll show you a little later on. But what I just wanted to show um, was quickly, um, actually I'll just let's not say that. I'm just going to jump back into, let's reopen the hydraulics. And I just wanted to quickly show you some of the other aspects of the interface. And like I said, we only get time today to scratch the surface, but just to show you quickly what happens if we jump into the render aspect of Fusion, you can see now I can create material reflections, uh, I can create shadows, and we can jump up here and do a realistic rendering of that particular part. So um, again, we can set up canvas uh, type backgrounds, we can set up a whole range of lighting styles, uh, we can put decals on things, we can do a range of different controls. So very, very powerful tools, all in the one interface, guys. So, Lots of different options there. Uh, down here, we've got the animation function. And basically what this does, it explodes my assembly. And we can then simply play that assembly uh, coming apart. So I haven't set this up at all. This is just all default in Fusion. So because I've created my hydraulic cylinder as an assembly, when I jump into the animation mode, um, basically we get this option to create movements within of all of our components down in the timeline at the bottom here. And yeah, like I said, we can do a range of different things with that. Uh, it's basically like a little MP3 player. So great, you could jump in and record this out to an AVI file and put some little notes on here to the, to the fitter that's putting this together. Don't forget to insert the O-ring here before you insert the, uh, the piston head onto the, sorry, the head onto the, the cylinder. Don't forget to put some Loctite on the screws here. Uh, when we assemble this to stop the part coming apart. So we can add little notifications and do all sorts of things with that. But like I said, you could record this out and play it on an iPad. So your, uh, your fitter out in the shop floor can very quickly um, know what torque setting these nuts are set to, for instance. So it's all about communicating that design down to the production environment. Simulation is another area, and we just don't have time to dive into this today, but basically with the simulation side of things, we can animate a, um, uh, a load on a, as you can see in the little example there, a set of uh, 
bicycle forks or uh, motorbike forks and uh, we can put 100 kilos of load and see where the stress is. So Fusion has some very, very powerful tools that, uh, that function uh, in a whole range of different disciplines and for setting up simulations and things like that. Like I said, the last one down here, actually I've got a, a little file in here of a, a CAM example, uh, which I'll quickly open up. Um, just to give you a bit of an idea. So this is a, um, uh, a six axis CNC lathe. Some of you may have come across this before. This is just a sample file. But effectively, uh, just to show you how easy this is, um, obviously this has been set up previously, but we can jump in here and simulate and watch our tool going through the process of machining material. So this is uh, just a simple cam, cam example. So if you can imagine, we've got a, a lathe here and uh, we'll jump through that quickly, <laughs> running out of time. But yeah, effectively, there's some toolpath to create uh, that particular item. So yeah, very, very powerful, guys. Um, and you can see this is obviously working now with an end mill on a multi-axis machine, um, a machining center. But uh, yeah, basically, with Fusion, it's all in the one place, guys. So you can see here, when we jump into manufacture mode, we get a whole range of machining options for drilling and pocket milling and a whole range of different uh, tools here uh, that, we can, that we can use. So I can't emphasize enough that Fusion is a horrendously powerful system that, uh, that just does some amazing things for you, uh, gives you some great tools to, uh, to create, um, yeah, some pretty impressive uh, aspects of your, uh, your scenario. So I'm just gonna quickly shut down, sorry guys, I don't wanna take up any more than an hour of your time, but, um, yeah, effectively, uh, so we've modelled up our clevis. Um, next thing I just quickly wanted to show you, uh, I'll just open this uh, little vice, which is a um, vice off a surface grinder. And I just wanted to show you how easy it is to create a drawing infusion. So here's a vice with quite a range of different components. You can see, um, it's like that, but, uh, yeah, we can basically, we can animate that vice, move it around a bit. No, it's not happy, is it? Again, my, uh, my bandwidth may be creating some grief here, but uh, to create a drawing, all we do is jump into the design tab again, go to drawing here and go from design. If we wanted an exploded drawing, we could simply pick from animation, but I'm going to go from design. What this does now, you'll find it will open up a another uh, simple little interface. And again, this is a, a relatively large, well, it's not a large assembly, but um, it's a um, slightly more complex assembly, but um, so what Fusion is doing in the background, it's actually creating all of these um, uh, components and effectively what we're going to do in a moment is, um, uh, so we need to select, so we need to actually pick the items that we want to include. And uh, so Fusion goes off and basically here's my drawing sheet. <clears throat> and um, effectively from here, very, very quickly and easily, um, we can set up a range of different visual styles on this particular item. Um, and yeah, we can do a range of different views. We can set the scale obviously. Um, make that slightly bigger. And I'm going to place that view just like so. Okay, now if I want to edit that view, I can just simply double click here, come back in here and change the orientation, for instance. So if we wanted a, uh, an isometric view, we can just pick this option and end up with a, a very nice isometric view. Now, again, I've got all my hidden details shown there, which I don't necessarily want. So we'll pick this option here. And uh, got quite a nice little drawing there. Basically, what I'm going to do now, I'm going to just minimise the, uh, the data panel so we've got a bit more space. A really cool thing that we can do is just simply place a table. And what this does is it will place into my drawing a parts list of the components of my, of my vice. Now, admittedly, if I was to try and do that in AutoCAD, and I challenge anybody to do that as quick as I've just done it. Now, admittedly, I've picked up a modelled part, but as you can see, we've got a complete parts list there all ballooned, number ballooned here. Um, and obviously we can do a range of, of different things there. So 
Uh, that's just a really broad brush overview, guys, of the Fusion interface. Do explore it. It's a, it's a very, very powerful tool. Uh, it's got some great little functionalities that, uh, that will save you a lot of time. So what I'm going to do now is, is just jump back quickly to our PowerPoint. I just wanted to show you one or two other things. So just going back to our Clevis, um, because I couldn't run this design study, but here's some examples of the components uh, that Fusion generated. So here's uh, a total of 12 different samples of that particular clevis that could be produced in this fashion. So again, with 3D printing, um, this is all available to us now. So effectively, we started off like this. Um, here's the component that was most like what we actually wanted and, and that had the perhaps the best form for us. And we actually printed one of these. So this is actually a physically printed component of A2K's Markforge Metalex printer, um, which we did in 17.4 stainless steel. And um, yeah, again, that's how we came up with all of those other aspects. Like I said, uh, we, we lost 60% of the material weight. We gained strength by placing this model like so. So here's how we used to do things uh, in the olden days. Um, but this is what the future looks like, everybody. So um, yeah, we're, uh, we're coming a great deal of distance. Um, I think I might, uh, I'm not sure, Dex, how are we going for time? Have we got many questions there or can I run through these couple of uh, examples? Yeah, we should, we should be good for time, John. So should yeah. be fine for time? Okay. Yep. Um, so I'm just going to run you through one other example and this was, uh, this was a generative design that, um, that came out of uh, Inventor actually, but the same engine is used in Fusion. So this is the old uh, bracket that is a seatbelt bracket that um, General Motors used to use. Um, basically, it was um, eight parts. So we've got a range of different folded metal components and, and welded fabricated components. Um, so here's the example. And uh, basically, what we needed to do was, uh, obviously, with electric cars and things like that, weight is a, is a massive issue. So you can see here, um, here's the original part. Here's what Fusion has the capacity to generate. Like I said, this one actually came out of Inventor, but the same, it's using the same engine as, as, the, as the Inventor model. So um, if I just step you through, here's some of the other iterations. So Fusion produced all these, um, again, using the Autodesk Cloud Server, and the designer was able to pick one that perhaps suited him best. So if he realized that they needed some clearance, obviously you wouldn't pick one of these more dense models, but this model here, effectively is as strong as this one, uh, but much lighter. So we're seeing a lot more of these ergonomic shapes um, in the marketplace. Here's another great example. I'm actually just going to play you a little video. Um, so I'm going to uh, just jump into this example. Basically, this motorcycle needs a swing arm. How do we want to design the swing arm? Well, we could go for a very traditional square box section of RHS or aluminium extrusion or whatever we wanted. But here's an example of how fusion um, could help us create a, um, a model of this particular motorbike swing arm. So you can see here we set, oops, just turn that up again. So yeah, you can see we set up all the, the various aspects of that and uh, we set each of the areas of interference. Um, basically the software goes through all of these areas and then will generate all of these different iterations of how that particular component could be made. Okay, and then we can simply put in filters to say, well, I want optimum strength, I need stiffness, I need rigidity. Um, which particular design do we want to use then to actually create our finished component? Right down to who can manufacture this part for us. So you can see there a, a rather interesting looking uh, swing arm, but if we insert another one, and this one's interesting because we could actually get this made in Sydney, Australia. So there you go. There's, uh, there's a company in Sydney that could actually manufacture this part for us. And uh, we could quite happily go and 3D print that part as a, a generative model and then insert that uh, with a, a few minor machining functionalities there. Um, again, all could be run on Fusion quite happily. And uh, we can take that into our model of our, of our motorbike. So look, I hope, um, I hope that's been interesting for everybody. There is one other little clip that I would like to, uh, to close off with. Um, 
and um, I'll, uh, I'll pass back to Dexter in a moment, but uh, Dexter wants to talk about some of the other uh, tools that we've got available to us. But I just want to play this, uh, this little um, clip for you. Sorry, let's start it again. So uh, that's basically it from me, and I'm going to uh, hand back to Dexter. I hope you found today interesting. Um, we do have uh, some Q&A afterwards, so feel free to, um, to join back into that session. I'll just quickly jump back to the PowerPoint, Dexter, and you can um, step everybody through. Yep, thank you, John. So everyone, we're currently running a promotion for a limited time where you can get 50% off Fusion 360 software. Fusion 360 team participant, Fusion 360 manufacturing extension, or Fusion 360 gem design extension. So it ends on July 17. And you can visit atkstore.com forward slash promotions to buy now. So I'll just about, I'll just share this link on the chat right now. And we also have our instructor led build training. If you can share that, please, John, that slide. So we have three upcoming courses available on July 1, August 5, and September 29. The course covers the core topics for working with Autodesk Fusion 360. The teaching strategy is to start with the core tools that enable the student to create and edit a simple model and then continue to develop those tools. Not every command or option is covered because the intent is to learn the fundamental modeling tools and concepts. So for more information, you can contact training at educatetechnologies.com.au for more information. So I'll just hand that back over to you, John, and it looks like we have a few Q and A's, if you can see that. No troubles, yeah, I'll just pull them up quickly. Thanks everybody for your questions and uh, thanks for your attention more than anything. Um, so yeah, there's, uh, there's a couple of questions here. I just need to sort through and find, um, uh, and look, we will reach out to uh, those that have supplied um, um, uh, email addresses if you'd like us to respond to these questions offline. Um, um, just reading through. So a couple of people have asked, um, who's the company in Sydney that can uh, do generative parts? Um, I don't have a specific company. I'd have to chase that up with the Autodesk. Um, but Red, uh, but A2K can certainly help you with this. Uh, more than happy to, uh, we have a metal printer here in Adelaide that, um, that actually is quite capable of printing tool steel and a range of other uh, um, steels. So Inconel and um, 17.4 stainless steel. So like I said, we, we have the option and the capacity to help with that. Um, yeah, so with um, one of the other questions here is uh, when drawing components on Fusion from David. Thanks, David, for your question. Um, and there are multiple parts. Do you draw multiple sketches or sketch and then create multiple bodies? You can do either, David. So to answer your question on multi-body modeling, generally we would um, run with a, a multi-body type component, but certainly both options are available where we can sketch and design and add to other components if you like. Certainly, we can add multiple sheets to a drawing as well from Andrew. Uh, thanks, Andrew, for that question. Yes, we can place multiple parts on uh, one drawing sheet. Yep, there's no problem with doing that. Somebody's asked, what are the BIM cap capabilities of Fusion? So Fusion, uh, thanks, Finnegan, for your question. Um, yeah, the, uh, the, the BIM capabilities, yes, certainly we can work with BIM, and you'll probably... Um, uh, if you've come across the BIM world before, certainly... Uh, those collaboration tools. In actual fact, 
there's a there's a product called um, uh, that Autodesk run, which is effectively BIM for Fusion. So um, Fusion has its own sort of space, if you like. Um, yeah, so hopefully uh, that answers your question. Um, I can, uh, Dex, are we able to provide people with a replay of this presentation? Will they get a link to that? Somebody's asking here if we can provide a, a link to the to a recording. Yep, so a replay of this will be available tomorrow afternoon on our YouTube channel. Oh, fantastic, thanks. Yep. Thanks, Dex. I'll just share that link on the chat. Very good, thank you. So yeah, if you go to the A2K YouTube channel, you'll find um, a recording of today's presentation will be up uh, to do that. Um, and yeah, apologies for missing out on that uh, initial chat of not being able to see my Fusion screen, everybody. Uh, apologies uh, for that. But, um, I think that sort of covers off most of those um, um, life, uh, those questions, decks. I don't think there's anything else there. Um, yeah, I think that's... Is there any others there that you can see that I need to answer? Somebody's put up a question about an age restriction. Andrew, thanks for your question on that. Um, I believe there is uh, some sort of age limitation. Um, and you're right, it is being introduced to, to younger students as time goes on. Uh, can I, I'll come back to you on that one, Andrew. Thanks for your question. I'm not 100% sure of that off the top of my head, but um, certainly the school's licence, again, because of... Um, uh, imagine privacy and, and one thing and another, there's uh, restrictions on some of those softwares. But let me, uh, I'll come back to you on that. Thanks, Andrew, for your question, and I'll try and answer that via email if that's okay. So, if this, uh, look, I'm not sure, there's a couple of other messages coming in now. Um, exporting to Revit as a family, not at this stage, I don't believe, although you could go through Inventor to do that. So, you might have noticed I showed. Uh, thanks, Rob, for your question there on exporting to a Revit family. Uh, we can certainly do that out of Inventor presently. So you could export the model from Fusion to Inventor if you had an Inventor license, I guess, um, or use a, um, um, a model uh, from Fusion exported to Inventor. Uh, and then certainly we can export out of Inventor as an RFA um, file as well. So, yeah, it's, um, that's certainly... Uh, Yep, thanks for your question on that one, Rob. And yeah, certainly uh, turning an STL into a body slash sketch. Uh, Autodesk do have tools to do that. I don't believe Fusion does that at the present, although I imagine it will be included. Thanks, David, again for your question on that. Um, there is a product out there called Mesh Mixer, which you may have heard of, another Autodesk tool that has the capacity to turn an STL into a um, a body, so it might be worth looking at that. And again, that's a, a fusion tool, uh, sorry, an inventor tool. There is uh, add-ons for inventor to do that. I'm not aware of one for fusion at this point, but I'd have to ch chase that up, so. Very good, well, I think, uh, can you see any other questions there that I've missed, Dexter? Yeah, I think we should just wrap it up there. Thank you, John. All right, sorry to go over time there, everybody, but I uh, hope you found today's presentation valuable and uh, be more than happy to Make contact via email if you're keen to learn more or certainly attend one of our training sessions.